channel members. Um, as you know, and by the way, you can turn to Revelation chapter 5. That's going to be what we study today. Um, each one of the panel members, I ask them to answer a question. So the first question is, let's see, let's, what is your favorite instrument? And Rick told me, none slash all. So that's Rick, he, you, you can tell him any instrument and he'll say that's my favorite, right? Any instrument? Okay, use, use the mic there, if you would. No special mm -hmm. instrument. All right. I asked um, also, Rick, to answer this question. Who's your favorite all-time worship leader? And you say none, but different artists have spoken to you. You want to tell me some of the artists that have spoken to you in the past? Okay. Yes. Um, I, I say in the past, I've, um, like Tennessee Ernie Ford, when he sings, um, uh, my brain has fudged now that I'm up here. <laughs> um, uh, so when he sings, yeah, uh, it is well with my soul, like that one. Like, yes. And um, I grew up on that. And then later on, um, Ta Todd Agnew has really spoken to me. Um, he has a album called Better Questions, and he asks a lot of questions that it seems like many Christians are scared to ask or or um, even discuss, and he discusses that on his album. And okay. so I've really appreciated that. And uh, these days, if I really wanna worship, like just absolutely worship, I love Lauren Daigle. Like, I can't help but just raise my arms up and just praise God when Amen. I'm listening to her. All right, thank you. And I'm just gonna quote a couple of your favorite lyrics. Uh, Trust in You by Lauren Daigle. I'm going to reference that one. Okay. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you, I will, I will trust. trust. And I will trust. I will trust. And I will trust in you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Do you. Can you resonate with those lyrics? Thank you, Rick. Mm -hmm. um, so that's Rick. That's one of our presenters, one of our uh, panel members. Denise, she says, in short and sweet language, um, her favorite instrument is the French horn. Surprise, right? She's the flutist, but she loves the French horn. Her favorite all-time worship leader is Jesus. And then her favorite lyrics are written by Evie. Correct? And maybe you got those mixed up. Maybe Evie and then Jesus Loves Me. I I'm, couldn't quite understand. That's the song you like. All right. Praise the Lord. That's the one that calls me to worship. Jesus Loves Me. Well, there's another song, a couple other songs that are my favorites. But um, In the Stars is Handiwork I See. But it doesn't, it, it says, uh, it talks about... Um, I can't remember the words now, but anyway, the, the words, if you sing them all the way through, you'll hear the ones that um, describe uh, what makes me turn my heart to him. Amen. But then when I was really thinking about it, I think Jesus loves me is the thing that he helps me to know because there's sometimes I guess I don't love me. All right. And I need somebody to love me. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Um, joy. Joy, you uh, said that you have many favorite instruments, but they're all in the woodwind, woodwind section. Is that right? Okay, and so then uh, your favorite lyrics of all time for you. So I really don't have a favorite author, I, uh, artist. I honestly don't pay attention to who is singing what. I just certain songs I like. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not the only one. <laughs> My husband can quote everybody from our 60s music, but I have not a clue. But my most favorite song, whenever I am sad or happy or what's going to touch my heart is Amazing Grace. And probably the most thing that really touches me is how sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me. And, you know, throughout my life, I have wandered away from God. I wasn't brought up in any church, but it is his amazing grace that has saved me. So that is what has always touched my heart. Thank you, Joy. Thank you so much. All right. And Anne, 
She says her favorite instrument is the banjo. Is that right? Good. And then artists and worship leaders, the Statler brothers. I don't know if any of you know who they are, but I do, and I love to hear them. And then the 12th man, the fourth man, the song, the lyrics. They would not bend. They would not bow. They would not burn. They were affected by the fourth man. How cool. Can you see that picture? Wonderful lyrics. Thank you. Steve, you said it's difficult to answer because uh, you, you love music and all the instruments. And what instrument? Oh, your dad played the accordion. So you love that instrument, the sound. Oh, yes. Thank you. And then uh, you love choirs, like the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, to lead you into worship? Right. And like the Brooklyn Tabernacle. Okay. I like a wide range of music, but the choirs, my favorite, the favorite, uh, my favorite album is, it's actually two, uh, uh, I'll say discs, uh, are uh, the 50 greatest hymns. Um, and I don't know why that is, but that's what moves me, are the old-time hymns by a great big choir. Okay, and now some lyrics, your favorite lyrics of all time that really speak to your heart in worship. Yeah, I had a tough time with this because there's two. One is, uh, it is well with my soul uh, because it calms me. And uh, the other is redeemed, uh, how I love to proclaim it. Uh, and uh, uh, but I much prefer the newer version of that where it's got a happier beat because that's what I feel like when I sing it. Amen. Thank you. Today we have one goal and that is for you to see Revelation 5 perhaps in a way that you haven't seen it before. We're going to walk our way through this, read our way through the book. We're going to have some opportunities for comments. Uh, but what I would like to set up for you is a picture of the last time you left your keys somewhere. Uh, it happened fairly recently for me. And you couldn't get into either your car or your house. Does anybody resonate? Okay. And, uh, and so you start searching for the key. All right. And what we have here in Revelation 5 is a picture of the whole universe waiting for somebody to unlock something. And it seems like the keys are lost and nobody has the key. And so that's the context of what we're gonna be reading about today. And the second thing that I want you to know is that this panel right here, along with the help of the Holy Spirit, are gonna help you know that whether you have a musical bone in your body or not, you are in the process and you will eventually write a hit song that will be off the charts, it will be so good. You will not only write the song, but you will sing that song. That's what the Bible teaches in Revelation 5. So let's open our Bibles to Revelation 5 and there's a pew Bible in front if you don't have one with you and I'd like our panel to start. First of all, I'm going to invite uh, turn by turn to read a few verses and you read right along with the panel. Rick, would you please read verses one to three and then make some comments. Okay. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. Thank you. Some comments as you, as you read through that, uh, what struck you and what do you think was going through John's mind when he wrote it and he received this from God? Well, I was thinking about that last night and I was thinking, man, that would be, you know, if I was in his position, I, that would, it'd be really depressing, it would be really sad. And I, I would be, I, I couldn't believe that no one could do it. And, and 
and then I read the next verse and I was like, yep, that's exactly what I was thinking. So I don't think there's much to... Yes, okay. It's pretty straightforward. <laughs> and so, Denise, would you read the next verse for us? Verse 4, following along. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. So what, was, what do you think John was feeling uh, as he wept and wept? Well, I don't know. Was he awake or asleep in this? Good question. Was he awake or asleep? What do you think, panel? I think he was awake. You think he was awake? So this was a vision? Like, well, I don't know, but I know that when I dream at night, I was thinking about this, and it seems like sometimes your emotions are even stronger than they are in the daylight or in reality. Sometimes you come away so with such a strong feeling that it doesn't leave you when you wake up and you it helps you to remember what you were thinking or dreaming or seeing you know I've had a couple of dreams like that where it was so vivid that I knew God was talking to me and he was saying something that you know meant okay. a lot to my life thank you so he was pretty pretty upset looked like to me and probably felt it all right. He wept and wept. Yes. Uh, Joy, could you read verses 5 through 7? Certainly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the Lamb of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the spirit, seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. I'm sorry, and seven? Uh, he came and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. So, Joy, tell me about this imagery that we have one Jesus is being referred to. It's, unpack that a little bit for us. He's a lion, he's a lamb, come on. Exactly. So we do know our, our Jesus has many names. And King of King and Lord of Lords. And I won't sing to you. Your children have to put up with me with singing Jesus Loves Me in the cradle roll. But that's something that Jesus has to give me is a good voice when I go to heaven because I won't sing for you right here. But he's also called our Redeemer, our Savior, the Son of Man, the Lamb of God. And in here he's called the Lion of the Tribe of Judah the root of David. And so if you go back into Genesis 49, and when Jacob is giving blessings to all his sons, Judah was actually the fourth son. However, the first three sons were not that desirable. And so he gave his blessings to Judah. And if you go into um, several of the others, Numbers, it talks about Balaam's oracle, where he talks about Judah as being the lion. And we know a lion can be a very terrible, very strong. Lions are representing strength. And we certainly saw that with Jesus with everything he went through. And if you go on into Micah and then Matthew, it certainly does tell about from uh, all the way down through David, from Judah to David to Jesus. So he is the root of David. So here is what the, the lamb of Judah, or excuse me, the lion of Judah is talking about. It's giving us in at the time when Jesus came, if they had been reading their Bible all the way through Micah, it tells about where the Lion of Judah is coming, but they miss that. And so then when you go to the Lamb of God, and, it, and it's heartbreaking when it tells you looking as if he had been slain. And in Isaiah, and I think it was Isaiah 53, it describes what Jesus went through. And that's heartbreaking to think what Jesus went through for me, for all my sins that I have done. And so here is the slain, the lamb that was slain. And so that is, uh, even though we think about the lion, we think about the lamb, we know it is our one and same Jesus, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Thank you. Uh, I'd like now if um, Anne, Anne, would you please read verses 8 through 10? 
And when he had taken it, the four living creatures, cherubim, and the 24 elders, living humans resurrected, resurrected with Christ, fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain. And with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Amen. So would you identify who sings this song? According to scripture, who is going to sing this song? The angels and um, the, the people that have been resurrected with Christ. All right. Um, who is the song sung to? It's sung to Jesus. And, and what is the song about? It's really about the act of why he could open the scroll of what he did for us um, and what it will do for us once he All right. opens the scroll. Okay. Um, Steve, would you read verses 11 through 14? Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice, uh, they were say, saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb to be uh, praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Uh, the, the four living creatures said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. Oh, my. Yeah. So, Steve, uh, help us understand how the angels and every creature, every living creature, participated in this worship experience. Yeah, when I, when I read this, uh, my mind takes me back to uh, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 22, uh, where Paul writes, We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. I think about that because one of the things I often wonder about and think about is how sin, uh, and sometimes when I think about sin, I, well, it's only a little sin. Uh, but uh, the problem is, is that I go to this and all of a sudden I'm confronted with the idea that sin is so awful that uh, it took my Savior's life but from a, a, a perspective that is even more close to me, maybe, I shouldn't maybe say it that way, but something that I, I can feel as a human is, I look at the mountains, I look at the ocean, I look at everything around, and I'm saying to myself, this entire world has been impacted by sin. And uh, uh, that is something that I have a hard time getting my mind wrapped around. But yet, when I think about that in relation to these verses, what I think about is that uh, uh, when, when the end is, is here and the Lord has come, then all of a sudden everybody and everything is crying out in joy. Uh, yeah. You remember that one of the things I love is a good choir, a great Amen. choir. Amen. This is going to be a great choir. Amen. Will even the stones be crying out? Wow. You know, wow. It just um, amazes me when I, uh, when I think about that. Because what Jesus has done has uh, uh, really impacts me personally. But now I understand that even more than me by far has been impacted by this entire ordeal. What's the response to that? Everything cries out. Everything worships the Lord. That's what this is all about. Is, is it saying, and the elders fell down and worshiped. So what we're talking about here is, is we're talking about every creature, if we want to narrow it down, 
to humans and perhaps other beings and so forth. It, but still, the point, the point is being made that it's everybody, every nation, every tongue. Uh, it's uh, uh, everything from Adam and Eve all the way to the last baby that's born, everything. All right, right. Let's, let's talk about the music right now, okay? Any panel member, do you think this song that is being described here is fast tempo or slow? What do you think? I kind of think that... Use the mic, please. Yeah. I was thinking about this, and I kind of think that it is almost individual, that God has the ability to make it resonate with whatever you, um, whatever works with you. Mm -hmm. I think that God could do that, that if, if you like fast music and that would hit you, then God can make you hear that. And if you like slow music, then God would make you hear that. But I think God has the ability to make us hear whatever would hit us. So I think it could be anything. Any other comment? Yes. I think I'll have a hard time staying in my seat. And uh, uh, I think about David when he brought the ark uh, into Jerusalem and the joy that he expressed. So fast or slow, I don't know. Joyful, absolutely no doubt about it. And uh, an uncontainable joy is what we see here. Okay, thank you. Um, what do the lyrics mean to you? We've just read the lyrics of the song. Uh, although there is a, a little word in there that sends me off on a rabbit trail because it, say, this, it says that there's a new song and I'm trying to figure out, okay, if the lyrics are already written down here, but then if it's a new song, how does that work? So talk to me a little bit about what you think these lyrics mean and how they could be a new song uh, as well as a song where the lyrics have already been identified. Yes? A new song just simply means this is a song that nobody else has sang before. And, uh, uh, and also it means that it's also a, a, a large number of uh, individuals who have had different experiences. And as a result of that, they're singing, for the person next to me, I can't sing her song. I can't sing his song. I, I can only sing my own song. And uh, because I'm now experiencing something that I have never experienced before, I'm singing about an experience that is brand new to me. And uh, I guess that's it. Thank you. Any other comments about the lyrics, what the lyrics mean to you? All right. How can we apply our Bible lesson today from Revelation 5 to our church family? either on an individual level or on a corporate level, a family level. I think personally for me, it's always been um, reaching out to others and to share this song, this, uh, you know, we all are in different walks in our life and we all change. Uh, up and down in our life. So I think I want everyone in my church family, everyone in my family, my work family, I want them to be able to sing this song. So for me, it is uh, reaching out to show them the love so that they can help sing, <clears throat> excuse me, what Jesus did for all of us. Thank you. I'd like to review some of the lyrics that you sang this morning. Worthy, worthy is the lamb that is slain. Do you have a comment, please? I just wanted to go back to previously where, um, and it kind of wraps all in, but um, like I'm, new music is created, you know, through societies, through so, I mean, even in our own society, we've seen new types of music all the time. And, and to think that the God can't transcend something that's so completely different that reaches into every, no matter what your 
personal like or dislike, like it will reach you. And it, it will, I, I mean, I have no doubt that whatever he does, it will transcend and it'll be perfect for that moment, for that, I mean, because throughout my life, when I, the music that really speaks to me changes. That's why I can't really come up with a favorite artist or favorite song or anything because throughout my life, depending on where I'm at, it just, certain people just speak to me and help me to worship. And, and I think that's exactly what we're seeing in here is, I, it doesn't matter who you are, what kind of background, whatever, it's gonna transcend all of that. And you will just worship with your whole being, heart, and, and that could look differently. You know, some people, as one song says, will just fall down on their knees and, and praise God, and others will leap for joy. And, I, I mean, I, and as Steve said, it will be, be a very personal, personal response to the same song, and it will be full of joy, you know. So, um, yeah, that was. Thank you, thank you. We sang, worthy, worthy is the lamb that was slain. We sang, oh, that with yonder sacred throng we at his feet may fall, join in the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. We sang, then my song shall be how he ransomed me and has kept me by his grace. And as we close, I've asked Denise to sing a song that was sung by the pioneers of the Seventh-day Adventist Church right after a great disappointment that, did, that affected uh, a lot of North America, and it reached into many, many faith groups. When there was, in the 1840s, this strong feeling that the Bible was teaching that uh, Jesus was coming again, it was very clear in the minds of people. And as they read Revelation 5, they could almost hear the lyrics of this song that Denise is going to sing. It is found in your hymnal, number 452, and I think the words will be there as well. You have to focus on the last line. The whole song leads up to it. What heavenly music steals over the sea I must join that chorus. Let me go. Oh God, you have spoken to us today. And you've told us that there is this great moment awaiting us as songwriters and singers. When we can say to Jesus, you and you alone have the authority to open the scroll. You have the authority to open up the scroll that is locked because we are waiting to hear about our inheritance. And you and you alone, Jesus, have the authority to tell us that our names are written in that scroll, that you died and you live for us to join you in this great song, the song of all the ages, the song that the elders and the beasts and the animals and the rocks and every living thing joins together in singing. So we choose to sing that song now. Oh, my dear friends, I'm asking you today to consider putting yourself at the sea of glass and knowing for sure that by his grace you're going to sing that song. And if you choose to do so, you can just quietly say amen. Which means, so be it. <laughs> 